all of my books just fell. <laughs> <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and these are all of the books that I bought so far in 2021. Now, I actually didn't buy all of these. Um, a few of these were gifted to me or sent to me for review or sent for me um, for brand deals and such. Um, so I'm excited to show you all the books that I got are new this year that I have in 2021, if that makes sense. So let's get started because there are so many books here. So first I'm gonna show you um, this book called 11 Paper Hearts by Kelsey Hartwell. This is a book that was sent to me um, as like a PR package uh, from the author. She very kindly contacted me on TikTok and she very kindly asked if she could send me um, one of her PR package boxes. So uh, with that PR package there came the book there is a very sweet little card and note in here that I kept inside the book um, and then there's this like cute mug that says hot chocolate test I assume that has something to do with the book um, and then also these little heart lights that have been behind me in some of my newer videos um, I've been loving those lights so much so thank you so much Kelsey I'm going to be reading the summary for you it's, the book sounded super cute. Ella's life was picture perfect. She had a circle of close friends, an enviable social life, and an amazing boyfriend. But then something completely unexpected happened. A car accident after a Valentine's Day dance. When Ella woke up in the hospital, she couldn't remember the accident or anything about the week before it, including the reason she broke up with her boyfriend. Now, a year later, she begins receiving paper hearts from a mysterious admirer who seems to have the answer she craves. Ella is intrigued. The heart contains clues to help her remember her life before, and they all take her on a journey she never imagined. Following the paper hearts is the most spontaneous thing Ella has ever done, but will she find love? That sounded so cute. Um, Valentine's Day um, is probably already passed by now by the time you're seeing this video. So I may read this on Valentine's Day because I don't have a boyfriend. I don't have any, I don't, I'm not doing anything. So, uh, I picked this one up very 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 soon so thank you so much Kelsey for sending me this book and the wonderful goodies that were in that, that, that came along with the book. <laughs> the next five books were sent to me from book of the month. I have been working with book of the month on TikTok. That's how they contact me. That's where I promote all their books. Um, So please go check out my TikTok. It's always linked down below. My handle is literally my channel name. These are the five books that were in January's box. You have The Romance which is the dating game by Sarah Desai. Um, this one sounds really cute. I believe this one is a thriller, which is The Survivors by Jane Harper. Um, then we have The Removed by Brandon Hobson. I believe this one deals with those from the indigenous community. Then we have Outlawed by Anna North. I believe this is a Western of sorts. And then we have The Prophets by uh, Robert Jones Jr. And I believe this one has gay rep in it. I promote all these on my book TikTok. So please go check that out because um, I'm not going to be going into full summaries in here um, because again, that's where I promote them is on TikTok so go check that out. I'm going through this list by when I got them throughout the month so I went to a bookstore next in January and I ended up getting a bunch of historical romances like a lot. Um, don't worry there are more books later on in the video that are not historicals if those aren't your jam. Um, so there's more books after I talk about this list that are not historicals and then we have more historicals after the ones that are not historicals. There's a, there's a bunch of books. Okay, these are all of the books that I got at a bookstore recently. All of these historicals. So I'm gonna show you what I got. I might read the summary for a few of them, not all of them because there are a bunch. So first I have two Johanna Lindsay's. We have All I Need Is You by Johanna Lindsay. This one comes with this step back. Very cool, very red in here, red and yellow very pretty um I the the shiny cover caught my eye I believe this is a part of a series I don't really read Johanna Lindsay's uh summaries because, like I don't want to get spoiled for other ones in the series so and then I also got Say You Love Me by Johanna Lindsay that's pretty one there's a fan on the front um and then this is the step back for that one I think I've seen a bunch of people haul this one and I'm always like what is on going on with this hair like do you see that that's like highlighter yellow hair Anyway, you do you, dude. Um, then I ended up finding Devil's Daughter by Lisa Kleypas. I finally completed my Ravenel's collection. Um, and this is the pretty step back for that one. Now I own all of the Ravenel's here by Lisa Kleypas. And I love this series so much. So I had to get book number one, two, three, four, number five. This is number five. Then I found The Angel and the Highlander by Donna Fletcher. If you would have watched my historical romance readathon vlog, um, you would have known that I ended up buying this at the bookstore and it intrigued me so much that I had to go find the other books in the series and now 
during that whole week I read all of them in the series and this one was my favorite. I gave it five stars. Um, this one deals with um, our heroine pretending to be a nun to escape an arranged marriage and our hero finds her and it's very interesting. I love this series so much. Each book is about a different brother and this Sinclair family so much fun. This cover just really intrigued me and I had to figure out what the other books were about. So then I ended up finding Do You Want to Start a Scandal by Tessa Dare. I have a goal this year of reading all Tessa Dare's backlist. So I found one of Tessa Dare's books and I just had to buy it. And so here is the step back for that one. Very, very, very pretty. Um, I am currently reading uh, the Spindle Cove series and I believe this is book number four in that series. So very excited for that one. Then I ended up finding this pretty book, which is called The Damsel by Claire Delacroix. Um, this one is shiny as you can see, and the cover just drew me in. So I'm gonna read the summary for this one because it sounds so cool. Once upon a time, the legendary knight Burke Fitzgavin galloped into Kiltoran Castle and fell in love with Alice, the Lord's orphaned niece. But her uncle has determined that Burke marry one of his homely daughters instead. Through tricks and lies, Burke was sent away, believing that Alice wanted nothing of his heart. Pledged to a bride quest, Burke has vowed not to return home until he finds his long lost love. He returns to Kiltoran to discover that the fiery young innocent has become a woman. A servant on her uncle's estate, paying penance for Burke's long ago embrace, she wants nothing to do with him. Burke knows he must earn her trust again. Even as he slowly rekindles her desire, Alice's family attempts to thwart their romance, determined that Alice should not marry before her cousins do. But Burke is a warrior, and this battle to win the hand and the heart of his one true love will be his greatest challenge ever. That sounds so good. I needed to buy it. I read the back of this book and needed it. I also bought the second book, I believe the second book in this series uh, later on in this video, we'll see that book, but uh, I definitely had to get this one and this one just looks so good. Then I ended up finding Silk and Steel by Cat Martin for my Cat Martin collection because Cat Martin's step backs are absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, this one has a little bit of a cutout right here. And when you open it up, there they are. Isn't that like so pretty? Look at that. That one looks so cool. I don't know anything about this. I'm not gonna know anything about this. It's just, it's for my collection for the time being. <laughs> then I have The Price of Indiscretion by Kathy Maxwell for my Kathy Maxwell collection. Um, this one is the pretty step back for this one. This is one of my favorite step backs of all time. Like, do you see that? That is beautiful. I read the first one in this series during the historical romance readathon. Um, so I might read this one very, very soon. But the step back in here was just the main thing, the main reason why I bought this one because it is beautiful. Then I saw the cover of this one and had to get it. It is called Border Bride by Amanda Scott. Look at how pretty it has like, it's like raised here. The couple is raised as well. The text is, it is so pretty. Her copper gold hair outshone the wealth of his father's coffers. Coffers? Coffers? I don't know how to say that word. Her lovely figure was as graceful on a galloping stallion as in the King's Ballroom. Mary-Kate McPherson would attempt anything in her power to escape an arranged marriage with the arrogant clansman from the barbaric borderlands, for she only knew that he had an old score to settle, and that his desire to marry and tame her arose only from his devastating desire for inviting her body and revenge. His broad shoulders easily bore the weight of the King's trust. His teasing dark eyes lured every woman from lusty scullery maid to aristocratic vixen. But all Sir Adam Douglas demanded from a wife was decorum, or so he thought, until fiery spirit, spirited Mary Kate became his wife and he was forced with the ultimate challenge, a woman who could crave his sensual touch with the kind of passion men dream of, but resist the, his domination of her heart. That sounded really good and the cover just like, look at that. And there's a horse in the back. Do you see that? I thought that was a unicorn at first because I thought the ear was a horn. That is his ear not uh, a horn. Um, but that just, that looks gorgeous. I had to pick it up. And lastly, from that trip, I bought uh, Falling Into Bed with the Duke by Lorraine Heath. And this is the step back from that one. I absolutely adore her dress in here. It is gorgeous and I want it. I want this dress. I don't know a lot about this book. I've heard a lot of great things about Lorraine Heath. I saw the cover and it looked very familiar so I bought it. If you would have watched my 2020 reading goals video, I have a goal for myself to let myself buy one of my favorite books of all time to add to my collection. So January's book was The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. I adore this fantasy romance novella. I I love it so much. It's one of my favorites of 2020 for sure. One of my favorite romances of all time. Um, it's very, very, very short. And this one deals with a, an age gap where the heroine is older and it's a childhood crush. Our hero met our heroine when she was like 16 and he was probably like maybe 
eight um and it's years later and he's like the king of this land and he goes to find her and like tells her that he wants her as his wife and they go through this barbarian marriage ceremony which is absolutely fantastic to read about that is is good is good y'all read it I, I picked this one for my uh, January pick. Next I have a bunch of school books for you. Um, I am in a Eastern European history class and I'm in a young adult literature class. So I'm going to show you very quickly the books that I got for those because I ended up buying those. For my Eastern European class we had to buy three books that we're going to be reading throughout the course of the semester. One that I'm currently reading is The Good Soldier Spake by um, Drauslav Hasek. Um, I am this far the way into it we only have to read up to this blue sticky tab only first two parts um this book takes place in eastern europe following this soldier's fake right before um i believe world war one or right when world war one hits uh so yeah kind of interested just having to read it for class obviously um, and i don't know anything about these two but i have to read them for the class later on we have under a cruel star a life in prague from 1941 to 1968 by hita margulis kovali i cannot pronounce names i'm so sorry there's that book and then um the last one that we have to read for that class at some point is the door by magda sasbo I think that's how you pronounce that. There you go. Those are the three for my Eastern European class. And then we have my young adult literature class. So right now we are studying fairy tales in that class. So I had to buy um, Folk and Fairy Tales, uh, the concise edition by Martin Hallett and Barbara Karzak. We just learned about or started reading about um, or finished learning about Cinderella fairy tales, which was very, very, very interesting. I have a bunch of fairy tales in here. So I had to get that for that class. Okay, the next four are four that class as well. I already own a few of the books that we have to read for that class, um, but these are the four that I did not own. First one is Leviathan by Scott Westerfeld. I know nothing about this. The cover is interesting. <laughs> then we have the cover is just like crazy to me. We have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Hopefully that's how you pronounce it. I know this book is a beloved classic when it comes to Twilight. I've never heard of it before though, um, and the cover is just crazy to me. <laughs> and we have one I'm so excited for. We have The Crossover by Kwame Alexander. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I'm so sorry if I'm not. Um, but I was in a multicultural literature, ch children's literature class last semester and the graphic novel was something that you could have read for that class. Um, and I've like flipped through it and it looked so cool. But this is like the actual like book in it. And I believe it takes place in high school and deals with basketball with two twin brothers if I'm not mistaken. So very excited for that one. And lastly, for that YA Lit class that I had class that I had to buy, uh, we have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I had this book at one point. We sold it at a garage sale because I never bought, I never picked it up in like the years that I owned it. I'm kind of intrigued by this. I'm not looking forward to the creepy as heck pictures on here. That's the one thing I'm not looking forward to. Uh, <laughs> I get scared so easily. So I am kind of looking forward to this, but also very scared for those pictures again. So <laughs> So those are all the books from Hawaii that class that I had to buy. So then I ended up going to Ollie's and Half Price Books at one day. And I ended up going to Ollie's because I'd never been before. Um, and I heard that it was a great place to buy discounted books. I only ended up buying one book because I didn't know of any of the other ones. Um, there's a whole entire, whole entire aisle filled with Amish books. If you want Amish books, go check out <laughs> Ollie's. I ended up finding uh, Meet Cute, an anthology. I read this book years ago and loved it. This is a YA book filled with so many different Meet Cutes with different kinds of people and so many different sexualities are in here. And I believe the one about a trans main character is like my favorite one in here. Or there may be a- yes, 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 by um, Meredith Russo. I love that one. Um, so I read this book years ago and didn't have a physical copy and I ended up getting this book for two bucks. This hardback brand new book for two dollars. So snag that one. Oh also I forgot to mention that uh, with all those books that I ended up buying for like my YA lit class and like my Eastern European class I got some of those off thrift books and I bought so many books that I ended up getting a free book because you if you buy enough books on thrift books they'll um gift you a free book under five dollars and you just have to pay for shipping and so I ended up getting Under the Highlander Spell by Donna Fletcher this was the only book a part of the Sinclair Brothers series um that was under five dollars that was on uh thrift books so 
I got this for my collection. I read this one um, in January, if you didn't know. And so the rest of the books I'm gonna talk about are all these from uh, half price books. Some of these are historicals and then some of them are contemporary, but they're all mass market size. So I'm gonna get the two contemporary ones out of the way. First, we have A Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole. Um, this is finally me completing the series like that I own all of the rest in the Reluctant Royal series. I read A Princess in Theory uh, earlier in February and I really liked it. This is the second book in the Reluctant Royal series. I believe this is a romance between like a woman and um, a blacksmith or something. I don't know. Found very interesting. This is, a, this is everybody's like favorite in the Reluctant Royal series so I'm very excited. So now I completed that collection. And then my other contemporary one that I found was Just a Heartbeat Away by Kara Bastone. Ashley from Ash Heart Books loves this book. This was one of her favorites, I believe, of 2020. And she raves about this book. And I believe this is an age gap romance. And it just looks so cute. And I've heard nothing but amazing things from her. And I trust Ashley so much. And so I definitely, when I saw this, I had to buy it. So the rest are historical romances. <laughs> I ended up finding this beautiful, beautiful Julie Garwood book um, called For the Roses. This cover just intrigued me so much. Look how pretty that is. Roses are beautiful, so I had to buy it. Um, I've heard amazing things about Julie Garwood, and so I had to definitely buy this one. Then I bought one purely because uh, the step back is just gorgeous. We have um, Untie My Heart by Judith Ivory. This one is a cutout one, and when you open it up, there we have the step back here that is so pretty. Stuart Asgard is the new Viscount Mount Millers, Mount Villard, sorry. He doesn't know he's playing with fire when he in inadvertently runs a foal with Emma Hodge, Hodgkiss. True, the exquisite Yorkshire lady is a mere sheep farmer, but she also guards the most p colorful past that makes her only more appealing to the handsome haunted lord. Emma has come to him seeking justice and Stuart is determined that she will not leave until she has shared her secrets and his bed. Her clever revenge scheme must fail in the face of his soft words and tender caresses and then he turns the tables on his bewitching adversary, seducing her into a daring deception of her own. That sounded so good and the step back is just beautiful so very excited then i ended up finding the temptress by claire de la croix i talked about the first book in the series earlier in the video um and so i saw this one and was like look another one in the series so i bought it hopefully i like this series <laughs> then i ended up finding a viking romance which is called tender marauder by linda lang bartell this one is so cool uh it's erased letters here and I don't know anything about it. I, mean, I didn't read the back for it. I just knew that it was, looked Viking and I bet it's a Viking one. And um, I really like Viking related books. So I had to snag this one. And lastly, we have one that is just phenomenally gorgeous. We have The Dragon and the Jewel by Virginia Henley. Look at this. They are, it's erased. Their like imprint is on here. And then this is a metallic gold on the side and the back right here. It looks stunning. Okay, I'm gonna read the summary for this one. With her sapphire eyes and silken dark hair, Princess Eleanor was a bewitching beauty made for a man's pleasure. But once a child bride widowed at a tender age, she swore never to marry again and took a vow of eternal chastity until Simon de Fortmont marched into England and set his smoldering dark gaze upon her. King Henry's youngest sister, the royal family's most precious jewel, bold, arrogant, and invincible at the towering Norman knight inspired awe in the bravest of men and a reckless desire in Eleanor's untried heart. They call him the dragon, but the most feared and dangerous warlord in all of the land had one fatal weakness. Inflamed by Eleanor's incandescent loveliness and intoxicating innocence, he would pursue her with a passion that demanded unconditional surrender, a passion that would erupt in scandal and rock the embattled realm, staining the pages of history with blood and betrayal, igniting the pages of history with the rapture of all-consuming love. That sounds really good. I am super excited. And this cover is one of the most beautiful ones I have ever seen. <laughs> so, those were the uh, very many books that I bought so far in 2021. Please let me know if you have read any of these books. If you're interested in any of these books, please let me know. Uh, but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Thank you.